It's certainly been chilling and difficult to see what's going on in Turkey and Syria. And yet, every once in a while, they find somebody. They go under the rubble and they pull out a teenage boy, a, a newborn baby. And whenever they have that one little miracle, people gather around and they applaud and they smile because in the midst of what probably is now more than 30,000 lives lost, when one life is saved, it's a sign of hope and it's a miracle. And they take just some time to rejoice in that and then get back to work. You know, in the midst of all the stuff going on around us, it's probably easy to kind of lose the faith. But in the midst of the darkness, somehow we're called to rise up and to walk and not to lose whatever faith is left inside of our soul. That's why I like the gospel lesson so much this morning. It's kind of interesting. Uh, whenever Jesus came into town, people would gather around him because they would look for a miracle and everybody was crowded. And so, you know, speak of cutting in line, these four guys take their friend up to the rooftop and they lift him down through a hole right in front of Jesus, cutting in line of everybody else. And he's right there and Jesus says, my gosh, your faith. And the, the crowd is just waiting for Jesus to say something and have this guy walk away. And what does Jesus do? He looks at him and says, your sins are forgiven. And people are going to go, no, no, that's not why we came. We want to see the guy walk. But I think of those words, your sins are forgiven. I'm not sure how you are, but there's a lot of stuff in life that paralyze me. Whenever I'm doing something I'm not comfortable with, sometimes even on a Sunday morning, you know, I, I sometimes feel inadequate. And when you feel inadequate, it kind of freezes you and paralyzes you. Or maybe you've done something wrong and you make this mistake. I, we have a young man in the church who got this really good job and he was so excited. But every time he went to work and made a mistake, they get on his case. And so he went to work, and all he did was kind of freeze because he was afraid to make a mistake. And that's no way to live. And what about something that happens to you in the past? And you think about that, and what happened in the past paralyzes you to move forward. And we need that invitation to rise up and to walk. And how about when you lose a loved one? You know, I know several of you who have spent so much of your life taking care of somebody you love and to some extent it's a burden but on the other hand you like the person there and all of a sudden that person is no longer with you and you're paralyzed because your reason for living and being is gone and it's hard to move forward and so we all need those words and so Jesus looks at the guy and he says rise up and walk and all of a sudden he's cleansed he's healed he feels good about himself and he gets up and he takes his mat and he walks away and goes home because somehow that sense of hope was reignited in his soul. And now instead of being paralyzed, he could walk. And that can happen to you and me in so many ways. Are there people that have come through your life and when, things you, when you struggle a little bit, you think of those people and when you think of their story, it kind of gives you a little bit of skip in your step? I've talked about him many times over the years and his name is Adam. I like the name Adam because Adam in Hebrew, Adam and Eve, means mankind. And then Adama, add that, it means womankind. And so sometimes when I see somebody named Adam, I think they somehow represent the human race. Well, Adam's picture has been on the side of my wall for years, just outside of my office. And I remember when he first came to church, his parents visited, and they came to the church picnic that afternoon. We played softball, and Adam hit the ball and ran very awkwardly to first base. And some of the kids in the youth group kind of made fun of him. said, come on, you can do better than that. And afterwards, I had to talk to them and said, you know, that's Adam. He's new. He's got muscular dystrophy, and that's as fast as he will ever run. And a few years later, he was totally in a wheelchair, totally dependent, and he died at the age of 17. And when he was in high school, he insisted on going to kids' cross-country meets, basketball games, my daughter's choir concert. And I remember one Saturday morning, it was a cross-country meet with my kids were in, and it was sleeting, it was raining, it was cold, it was muddy. And so I called Adam and I said, uh, look at the weather, Adam, uh, we're not gonna go today. 
And he said, I'm not going to say what he said. <laughs> he said, the heck we're not. I said, Adam, it's a mess. He said, I am dressed in my wheelchair, ready to go. You pick me up. <laughs> and we went to Bullfrog Lake off 95th Street for a cross-country meet. And I have a picture of Adam in his rain gear next to my dog in a wheelchair in the mud. And he stayed there for the race. And I thought to myself, I got up. I kind of rised and walked because I got up. But Adam really rose up and walked because he got up and he got himself ready and he was ready to go. And even though he was in a wheelchair, he walked a lot taller than I did because he did not let anything get in the way. That young man inspires me every single day, even though now he'd be 45 years old because he had the guts and the courage to rise up and to walk. Another person I think about lately is a lady that I've never met. Her name is Kim. She works with one of you. She has a son, Jimmy, and he was engaged to Bonnie, and she was deep into a journey with cancer, and they were going to put off their wedding, but then they decided to get married, and they did. And yet her cancer has come back like gangbusters, and she's kind of weak and frail and a lot of uncertainty. And yet, I've never met her. And we did a little love bucket for her, and she called and said, you know, that love bucket thing, he could pay, make two car payments with that. And then she said, I hope you and your congregation realize the incredible power of prayer. I know we've never met, but somehow the spirit of your people has infected our journey and gives us the hope and the courage to move on. And one day we will come and meet you because you are important to us. You see, prayer doesn't necessarily change the world, but it gives you a kind of strength and inner hope that nothing else does. And so today, once again, I think of her, and I think of those words, rise up and walk, even if you're confined to your bed. So this morning, I pulled into the parking lot like I have thousands of times over the past 48 plus years, and I reminisced about the very first time I turned into the parking lot back in 1974. LaGrange Road was two lanes. Our driveway was full of gravel. We didn't have a front parking lot, it was just overgrown grass. And I looked at this small paint chip building and it gave me hope because I guess this is where I'm gonna spend the next few years, not knowing few meant 49. <laughs> but it just, that building gave me hope because it was a place of goodness and grace. And this morning I pulled into the lot again and it's a lot different. I saw the building, I saw the lights, I had to take a picture. And it made me realize that all of us need spaces and places where we can step back and look at the world even in the darkness and receive the kind of hope we need to get up and walk and to move on and to live in hope. I realize, especially over the past three years, the church takes many forms. The church does not mean a full house every single Sunday, which we haven't had in a long time. For some people, the church is 13350 South LaGrange Road. But maybe for some, the church now is your kitchen table. Maybe it's fairway number eight on the golf course. Maybe it's a meditation chapel in assisted living. Maybe it's a cold beer in the picnic table on a spring day. The church takes many forms, but the church is that something that lives inside of you and me that helps us rise up and walk every day. You know, earthquakes and evil <coughs> dictators and those who have lost their soul, they can take away the lives of innocent people, and they have, but nothing can take away the quiet power of Jesus' invitation to rise up and to walk. And speaking of rising, please rise for the creed. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>